Thank you, Katanya. Uh, this is uh, Professor Jennifer Harder, and I'm happy to welcome everybody to our McGeorge School of Law webinar, uh, being part of the solution, how to facilitate change in government with an online master from McGeorge School of Law. So I am Professor Jennifer Harder at McGeorge. I teach courses in water resources law, environmental practice, and administrative law with a focus on public agency law. I also serve as faculty director for the McGeorge Graduate Program. So today I'm joined uh, by two people. First, one of our excellent faculty members in the online program, Professor Jessica Gosney. Professor Gosney teaches a course that focuses on statutory drafting and interpretation called legislatures and lawmaking. She developed and teaches the course with our faculty colleague, Professor Chris McKaylee. She's also a McGeorge graduate and works in California's Office of Legislative Counsel. Uh, we're also here today with Katanya Worsham, who's the admissions counselor for the McGeorge graduate online programs and who will be helping us uh, with the webinar today and available to answer questions uh, today, providing some information about the program and also available post webinar. So we're going to talk today about the ways in which uh, that an MSL from McGeorge, Master of Science in Law, uh, here specifically our Masters in Government Law and Policy, can help you become a, an expert in law and government. Um, and I wanted to welcome Professor Gosney and Katanya. Thank you, Professor Harder. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. So, we're going to talk about, as I mentioned, the Master's in Government Law and Policy degree, a fully online graduate degree program for people who are interested in getting a real deep dive into government law and policy, but who do not need a JD to achieve their goals. So this isn't a JD law program, but a master's program, a graduate program. Our program is part-time and it's tailor-made for students and professionals who wanna further their education and advance their careers, but who do not live in the Sacramento area who otherwise need flexibility due to work or professional or other obligations. Uh, in addition to our master's in government law and policy, McGeorge also offers a master's in water and environmental law, another MSL degree. So our courses are uh, part-time, online, and fully asynchronous. Our program was inspired in part by McGeorge's Center for Distinction called our Capital Center for Law and Policy and our nationally ranked program in public and government law. So what I'd like to do now is turn to Professor Gosney's course, uh, Legislatures in Lawmaking, and talk with Professor Gosney about what the course covers and what students can hope to learn in the course. Uh, so, Professor Gosney, can you uh, give us some information about that? Yes, of course. I'm always excited to talk about this course. So, the Legislatures in Lawmaking course explores legislative institutions and the lawmaking process in both the state and federal governments. We cover basic principles of judicial review, of legislative action, and statutory interpretation, bill drafting as well. So a central focus of the course is to provide opportunities for the development of practical skills that will benefit the students in the real world. We really want this to be hands on. And these are things like drafting statutory language, bills, regulations, preparing and assessing bill analysis, commenting on legislation, and just participating in the legislative process generally, both at the state and the federal levels. So as Professor Harder mentioned, the course is co-taught by Professor Chris McKaylee, and he's a professional lobbyist uh, in Sacramento, California, who draws on his extensive experience in government relations and brings that to the course, as well as I work for the Office of Legislative Counsel here in California, which drafts bills and provides senators and assembly members here in California with legal advice relating to their bills and policy goals. So the students start in the course by learning basic principles about the structure of government and the source of legislative power. We study Congress and state legislatures across the country. We do focus a bit on California, uh, the US's most professional legislature. But last semester, we had students from Montana and Nevada as well, and we tied in information they brought from their states as well as we shared a lot of how the legislatures work in other states. 
We also last semester had students from Austria, England, and South Africa, which brought several discussions and we did a lot of comparing and contrasting the federal government, our federal government, with those governments in those countries. The course covers specialized topics. We really focus on legislative committees and committee procedures like markup sessions, the interaction of the legislative branch with the executive branch at the state level and at the federal level, the role of the media in politics and lawmaking, ethics and election rules in federal and state legislative processes, the federal and state budget processes, the role of the finance departments in that process, and direct democracy like initiatives. And then we look to the role of the federal and the state courts in lawmaking, how they interpret those statutes, how legislative history plays in. And finally, like I said, my favorite part, we apply our understanding of how those laws are interpreted um, to write clear and effective laws that accomplish their purpose. And what I really like most about the course is we don't just study these things from a theoretical view. We take a highly practical view. How can our students, how can you all be successful in the workplace? We follow actual bills through the legislative process. We study how statutes begin in bill form, how they're drafted, and you get the opportunity to test all those skills and get feedback from us, the professors, as well as your fellow students. Thank you, Professor Gosney. Wow, that sounds like a great course. You know, what I really like when you, when you talk about the course is the, the blend of theory and practice and practical skills that our graduates can use. And I know from talking with some of them that they really appreciate that balance in those courses. So as you're talking, it occurs to me, um, and, and as we're scheduled to talk about in this webinar today, there's a lot going on in the world that can benefit from expertise in government law and policy. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit about how students might use the lessons in this course to, to help facilitate change in government if they're excited about being part of that change. Of course. So let's say, for example, you're interested in public health, like COVID-19, um, a pandemic, or a public health crisis, and, and what do we do now, but also how do we change policy in the future, or maybe how do we put in place different bills and statutes and practices so that if we have a situation like this, um, again, in the future, we can be more effective and efficient about it. So, you know, in that scenario, maybe, for example, student is interested in how to navigate the government process to develop some of those reform approaches or to implement those approaches effectively. So we talk in our course which legislative committees would work on public health issues, both at the state and federal level um, in multiple states. And how do you interact with those committees? How do you go before them? How do you practically talk before them or submit those letters that you need to to a committee? How do you work with the governor's office and key agencies involved in public health to accomplish those effective reforms? Each governor's office works differently across the country. And as we all know, the federal agencies are very different than state agencies. How do we evaluate the language of statutes and regulations? And in today's time, executive orders are really important. Uh, how do we determine if they're gonna accomplish our goals? How do they play into each other? How do the effect executive orders affect those regulations and statutes that we already have on the books? And if you need to write a new statute or regulation, how do you do that? The important role of the media, the other players in the process, we've seen a lot of media coverage about COVID-19. Um, how does that play in? How do you use that to kind of effectuate your change and reforms? And then the outcome, um, one of the big outcomes from COVID-19 we're seeing is a big economic downturn. And how do we use the budget? How do we form a budget? How do we comment on the budget and participate in that process to make sure that programs are still getting the funding they need or where are we making those cuts? I think the legislatures and lawmaking course gives students the opportunity to really dig into that theory, but importantly, to kind of apply that to real world scenarios like COVID-19 where they may or may not want to make changes. Thank you, Professor Gosney. I, I think that the practical information just sounds um, so interesting and useful, and I have heard that from some of our students. You know, I wanted to note here that I mentioned previously McGeorge's Capital Center for Law and Policy. Um, and, and this degree, this government law and policy degree is drawn from our very successful JD program on that topic. 
one of the co-faculty for this particular course, Legislatures in Lawmaking, which Professor Gosney has mentioned, is uh, Professor Chris McKayley. If you'd like to take a look at some of the work that Professor Chris McKayley does with the Capital Center, the Capital Center publishes a, a blog called Cap Impact, and you can see there Professor McKayley talking about critical issues of the day, like public health and COVID-19, homelessness, and budget issues. And so you can, um, access that at www.capimpactca.com. Um, so thinking about all of these practical skills and how uh, the skills you might need to harness change, Professor Gosney, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about who you think would benefit most from taking a course like Legislatures in Lawmaking. Yeah, that's a good question. I think this course and also all the courses in McGeorge's master's degree program would probably be helpful to a broad range of individuals working in local, state, federal agencies, or individuals who work in private companies or do, you know, NGO, non-governmental organization work. But I think also others who are just interested in how laws and policies work and affect their work um, would also really benefit. For example, individuals in government affairs and lobbying, municipal, state agencies, maybe those whose work just intersects with law and regulation. Last semester, we actually had an individual uh, in construction management who deals a lot with construction policy in his work and was interested in getting more involved in that um, in our class. We also had state and federal legislative staff members, some people who worked in district offices for their federal members. We had attorneys, we had individuals who worked in state agencies, and we had a couple of students who just finished undergrad and were kind of deciding what direction they wanted to go in the government affairs policy world. Thanks, I think that's really helpful. You know, and I bet um, some of the folks listening are wondering what, given that this is an online course, I wonder if you could tell us about the kinds of things that student would be doing in this course on a weekly basis. Yeah, well, each course in the program is structured a little bit different, but they're all pretty similar. Our course does ungraded quizzes and writing assignments each week. There's some reading, and then we have a lot of voiceover PowerPoints, podcasts, and videos where you hear directly from us as the professors. And we combine this with highly interactive weekly discussions, which are my favorite part, where the students get to work together on hypotheticals, discuss current events, bounce ideas off of each other, um, and really kind of dig into the material together as a group. The Legislatures and Lawmaking course kind of relies on these weekly assignments to bring the information uh, to real life and bring in real life problems as well. And this is how it's structured in other courses, right, Professor Harder? Yes, that's correct. So we do use a, a very similar model in all of the courses. The, um, the program is tailored uh, to ensure that we're matching the tasks to the particular topics, uh, but it's, it's structured around those best practices in online teaching and learning. I wanted to say that, that overall, the online program is carefully designed to provide both that, that high degree of interactivity, but also to provide flexibility for individuals who are busy with work or families or any other obligations so that they can continue to engage in these activities, these educational activities, um, uh, while also taking care of their professional and other obligations. We use a format called asynchronous, which means that students generally do not need to be in the same place at the same time. A typical model is that many of the tasks will be, become available to students at the beginning of the week, say Sunday night, and then there's a seven day period in which students are all working on the same topics in generally the same time, but with the flexibility to work in the morning or at noon or at night as it, as it befits them, but then they can all talk about those issues in discussion um, as they choose. Um, so our, our top goal is to provide that flexibility, but also really foster the development of relationships between students and students and students and their professors. So those are our top priorities. I wanted to talk for a minute about some of the, the other courses in the program in addition to legislatures in lawmaking. And we've got our list here on where it says GLP, that's government law and policy of required and elective courses. 
uh, the, the students in the program first take a slate of courses that are designed to provide a foundation in language and process of law and government process. So in the first semester, you take introduction to legal analysis, which helps you develop skills in reading cases and understanding legal institutions. Um, as well as a course in analytical skills, which we've based around the topic of contracts. In the second semester, students take a deep dive into legislature and lawmaking with Professor Gosney and Professor McKaylee, and also uh, at the same time into agencies and agency regulations and regulatory processes in our course called the Executive Branch of the Administrative State. And students who start will all stay in those classes together and really get to know each other. Um, students also take some short one unit skills courses in leadership and organizations and persuasive public speaking. Those are one unit skills courses. And at their, in their second semester, they take a class called government law and policy, policy making, which is an advanced application of the skills learned in the prior courses. Then students can break into electives, and we have several available in negotiations, lobbying and politics, and elected law. Um, we also have the opportunity for students to do focused research with a faculty member, either in directed research or on a master's thesis, where they can really dig into a topic and do original legal or policy or practical research, uh, perhaps sometimes aiming at, at um, publication if that's what they're interested in. I've had some students interested in that. Um, I also wanted to mention any of our, our students that are pursuing government law and policy who also might be interested in environmental issues do have the option to elect into courses such as water resources law taught by myself, environmental law, or international water resources law. So those are open to you as well. Um, I am happy at, at a point later to take questions about these courses. For now, I am going to turn our program over to our admissions counselor, Katanya Worsham. Hi, and thank you, Professor Harder. Um, hello, everybody. As Professor Harder mentioned, um, my name is Kat Worsham, and I am the admission counselor for the graduate online programs here at McGeorge. Um, I just wanted to take a quick minute to go over some logistical stuff regarding the admission process and our application. Um, our application is open for fall 2020 and it can be found on our website. Uh, for those of you who attended the webinar today and wish to start an application for this fall, uh, just send me an email to the graduate law at pacific.edu and I will be happy to pass on a code to you. Um, to apply for our MSL, there's no entrance exam, so you don't need to take the GRE or the LSAT. Uh, you need a bachelor's degree and then to complete our application. Um, and then on this slide, we have some deadlines. So our application deadline for the fall 2020 um, start is August 3rd. And then orientation will begin on August 10th with classes beginning on August 17th. The orientation is an online orientation. We just want to give you a chance to familiarize yourself with uh, our online learning system that we use, which is Canvas. So you'll go through a little orientation course and it'll teach you how to upload assignments, um, how quizzes and stuff look, just to, so you're not walking into it completely unknown um, on your first day. And um, so this is our contact information. Please feel free to contact us at any time with questions about the program or the application process. Um, and now, I will open it up for questions, I, but before I do, I just wanted to take a quick minute to thank Professor Harder and Professor Gosney for hosting this webinar and providing information on one of the amazing courses we have here. So thank you, professors. Thank you, Katanya. It's been my pleasure. All right, so we'll open it up for questions. If you guys aren't familiar, you can either type them in the chat box or in the Q&A. Um, we do have a question from somebody who so I already have a JD from McGeorge. May I audit some of the legislative courses as I already have the basics and have been a public defender for 20 years, have transitioned into policy and legislative and grant work. We haven't discussed the possibility of opening up our online courses for um, auditing yet, but I think that's something that we are looking into. So at this time, I do not believe we are allowing auditing of those. 
Yeah, and, and Natasha, I would encourage you uh, to follow up um, with the Graduate Admissions Office, and we'll discuss the specifics of your situation. I think Katanya is correct. We don't have an, an audit availability right now, but we can let you know if that changes in the future. Absolutely. All right, so any other questions? Uh, we have another question. Can I send the application before my letters of recommendation arrive? Absolutely. I highly encourage you, if you are applying, upload things as you get them. Um, letters of recommendation can sometimes take a long time. And if we have everything else, it kind of helps us process things a little bit quicker. So Vanessa, I would definitely um, just go ahead and upload what you have. And then as we get your letters of recommendation in, we will be able to um, process your application a little bit quicker. All right, we do have one other question so far. Um, how much interaction do students have with one another in these online courses? I can go ahead and answer that. Um, if that's all right, this is Professor Gosney. So my answer would be a lot, actually much more than I expected when I first started teaching um, online. Uh, our course specifically does two discussion boards a week where the students are required to post an answer to the hypothetical or questions and then comment or provide feedback to two of their classmates posts. Um, but the students actually post way more than that. And we as the professors do too. Usually it becomes like an ongoing conversation with students returning to prior week's discussions and bringing things up in new discussions. And last semester, several of the students exchanged contact information on their own and had Zooms and phone conversations outside of class, um, as well as in small groups. So I think there's a lot of student interaction and interaction between the professors and the students. Great. Um, thank you, Professor Gosney. All right, do we have any more questions? I'll give you guys like another minute or so. Um, and just so you, oh, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Katanya, this is Professor Harder, and you may have ju been just about to say this, um, but I wanted, while we were waiting to see if people had more questions, I wanted to note that if you've attended this webinar today, is it, is it true that there's an opportunity to waive the application fee? Yes, Professor Harder, that is correct. Um, if you attended the webinar today, um, we will send you a fee waiver code if you would like one, um, and that'll waive the $50 application fee. Um, and that goes for if you're applying for the fall 2020 and um, or if you're waiting for the spring 21. Um, we have another question. If we wanted to continue our education after the MSL, how would the experience help us or progress us toward that direction being that it is online? I'd be happy to answer that question. This is Professor Harder. Um, it's a great question. Um, if you want to continue after the, the MSL, I assume that you're thinking about a, a PhD level type work. Um, it, it, so I think there's two aspects to this question. And one is, can the MSL help you progress toward a PhD? Um, the answer is absolutely. Uh, if the, the, this is a graduate degree, like any graduate degree. The fact that it is online um, is, is irrelevant to the, the value of the degree. You will get a robust education. This is a fully accredited program. You have the opportunity to do those directed research and master's thesis projects. And, and if you're interested in further education, such as a PhD program, I would encourage you to, to take those opportunities and work one-on-one -on -one with a professor to develop your area of interest so that we can, um, we can cr create the best foundation for you to, to apply for a PhD program. With respect to the second part of that question, which, it, which I think goes to the question of how do I make connections given that this is an online program? What about that professional networking? And I, I think that's a really important point and I'm glad you raised it because um, one of my goals as faculty director for the program and in the, the online teaching that I do is to really focus on that professional networking. And so we create as many opportunities as possible 
in the online space for students to network with each other, students to get to know the faculty members, faculty members bring in guest speakers um, who connect to the students through the program. I also work with the students one-on-one, uh, -on -one, as do the faculty members, to connect them to people in the industry, um, just via email or Zoom or whatever it happens to be. There's a lot of that going on right now um, in, in our regular professional environment anyway, and we're really seeing how we can make those professional connections. Um, and the same is true for academic connections for professors you might like to be uh, connected to for pursuing a program. I will also say that all of our McGeorge services are available to our graduate students. So students have access to check things out uh, digitally from the library, the online bookstore, uh, the bookstore mails you things. The career services office will provide career services. So you really are a full McGeorge student, not, not something else. You are a, a McGeorge graduate student. I hope that answers the question. If, um, if there are more specific questions on that topic following the webinar, please do feel free to reach out to me specifically. I'm at J Harder, H-A-R-D-E-R, Dot edu at pacific.edu. Thank you, Professor Harder. Um, it doesn't look like we have any more questions at this time. Um, so I'm going to uh, close it out. If you do have more questions, um, I will be sending out this webinar later, probably tomorrow morning sometime, and you can respond directly to the email if you have another question. I will put in Professor Harder's email and contact information as well. That way, if it's a question specifically for her, you can direct it directly to her. Um, but with that, I would just like to say thank you to Professor Harder and Professor Gosney once again for joining us and um, taking the time to talk about the program and the class. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, it's great right. to be here. <laughs> thank you. All right, everybody, have a great day. Thanks, have a great day.